It's hard to believe that just five months ago, this was Jules' top in her final round of chemotherapy. You must have had some moments when you were just staring at Tara. No, I never went there. Never? No, I didn't. I just didn't go there. I didn't let myself go there, I think. Um, I shed a few tears. I think that's good. I think that if you really feel a bit fearful, you should cry. It's a, a big release, you know. Some, letting something out is good. And, um, you know, it's once you've let it out, you know, you can replace it with something else. Hey, buddy boy. Hey, my man. Yeah, They've had boy. to dig deep, Jules and Linda yeah, and their respective partners, to find strength. Yeah. A year ago, Jules discovered a two centimetre yeah, lump in her breast down, you, that she knew, she line, says, she on, just on, knew was cancer, despite a mammogram failing to pick it up. I actually went and checked it again, and they said, no, there's nothing wrong. And I said, look, there's a lump there, and you better sort it out. How did you find it? I just made sure I checked it in the shower. And, um, you know, that's, you know, just being diligent, I suppose. And, um, and so they did an ultrasound, and it showed up on the ultrasound. It's Zena Princess Warriors miniature horse. <laughs> <laughs> the very day I got diagnosed with my cancer, I was waiting in this arena here, for him to um, have his harness arrive. And um, so I was pretty excited about that. In Jules's other life, she's a West Auckland farmer devoted to her horses. My doctor rang on the phone and said, um, you know, will, will you come into the office and talk to me? I said, nah, just tell me on the phone. I don't need to be, you know, you don't, I'm a big girl now, you can just tell me what's going on. I said, I've got, I'm busy. I've got a horse and harness. I'm not getting in the car to come down to tell you, you know, for me to tell you what's, what I already sort of know in my heart. She just kind of explained everything to me on the phone. And then, um, and then you got back to the harness. Yeah, and then we went for a ride on the horse. It was exciting. <laughs> the attack of the ninja mini horse. <laughs> we were all a bit freaked out, you know, because it was the big C, you know, the big C word always makes people kind of go, well, you know, hey, is she going to get through this, you know? Is it? Is this, is, am I going to lose my sister? Was what, what I was going through, you know, in my mind. I'm getting really good with the needles now. Yeah, just relax. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's good. I didn't feel it. In the following months, Jules underwent chemotherapy and acupuncture, changed her diet, was nursed by Linda for six months, and came to terms with the loss of her left breast. The crying is good. If you've got cancer, you should cry. You're allowed to. <laughs> so how did you feel about losing your breast? It was good. Get rid of it. No good. Put it in a bin. Throw it away. It's really important. <laughs> um, well, I felt like I, you know, needed to make a real good medical decision. Did you ever consider reconstructive surgery? No, nah, never. They're going to take something good off me and stick it somewhere else. It all depends where, whether you wa worry about your physical being, being who you are, or whether you think this, you're, how, who you are is more inside. And, you know, I think you know, I feel more, more I'm, in, I'm an inside person. Mm. That's who I am. It doesn't, phys you know, physical stuff doesn't really affect me too much. Did it stop you in your tracks? Uh, nah, I don't think it stopped me at all. I think it made me get up and go more. I think it made me go harder, actually. Sometimes I think, wow, I'm really glad I got cancer. So it made me think, wow, you know, what do I want to do in my life? You know, if, if everyone in New Zealand asked themselves that question, you know, what do I really want to do? What, what if I die in the next six months? Gee, have I, have I done whatever I need to do? Have, my, have I, you know, made peace with myself? You know? Have, and have you asked that question? Oh, hell yeah. I asked it the moment it happened. I said, what am I going to do? And I said, I want to ride my horse a lot. Yeah, good boy. She made other decisions about her life too. Some of the conventional medical treatments strongly recommended to her by specialists, Jules strongly rejected. I chose not to do the radiation. Why? Right. Um, as a lifelong member of Greenpeace, I couldn't have let them irradiate me. <laughs> What's happened to me with radiation? That's just going to burn all my tissue. And I just thought, I, I don't know whether I can heal that. I knew in my heart I probably couldn't. And I just felt that it was going to make me sicker. Was, so, that, was that against the advice of your doctors? Absolutely, 100%. But I said, this is my moment. 
and I'm taking control of it. Um, I chose not to do the tamoxifen. I'm sure the doctors don't want to hear me saying this, but you know, it made me feel strong. It made me feel as if I was in control of my treatment. She's freed up the scar tissue in her chest by getting straight back into physical work. Nothing like stack in the bar. Hey, hey in the bar. Afaria, she maintains the hoof health of around 250 Auckland horses. And she barely stopped work even while she was in chemo. And I made myself go through that job. I made myself sweat every day. And it was quite amazing because I thought, you know, this is a hell of a way to get chemo everybody to, you know. 